So welcome to part two. You know, I hope you guys are having a good day. Please make sure you start this video off by clicking that thumbs up button. If you're a first time watcher, please subscribe. I forgot to say that on yesterday's well, video. Well, it's okay. They already know. Yeah, last week I asked you guys for 2,000 likes. Do you know that it went to 3,300 likes? Like, I was surprised. I was surprised. So let's try to overtop that. Let's go for 3,000 likes. If you're on your phone, click like. If you're on the computer, click like. If you're at the tablet, click like. Them fucking bumblebees out there keep flying around. Um, so yeah, so in the previous video, we talked about the confirmation movie, Beyonce's Lemonade Project, and Kay Michelle. Um, so I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to get to is Future responding to Sierra um, last week. Future was just basically, because I haven't got time for everything he said, he was just basically saying that Sierra is a flop. There's no way that he could hurt her career. So, you know, he was counting suing Sierra. And he said, yes, he did, you know, call out her name. But he was, you know, frustrated with some things. But not in no way did he ever stop her sales. And then he, whoever wrote this, went into how many albums were sold for each of the projects for the past couple projects. So how am I trying to share her reputation? I mean, I mean, and, can I ask you a question? Yes. Is he lying? This is my thing, though. Sierra did upgrade Future, though. She because did. Nobody wasn't really checking for Future. Like, he had that song with uh, Kelly Rowland and mm -hmm. stuff. But then when he got with Sierra, that's when he really hit the prime time. Like in that song, I bet she was really telling that story. That's just like, but look at this. I like how you said that. Mm -hmm. Because that's just like how when Ray J and Kim Kardashian oh, were together. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't oh, I'm that. going to do it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and then Ray J called himself upgrading Kim. Mm -hmm. which he, And then Kim just shot all the way up. Mm -hmm. Married all the way up. And now Ray J is doing shows like Love and Hip Hop. <clears throat> yeah, we knew who Sierra was. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. But the fact that she upgraded Future to the point where Future is selling out almost everywhere he goes. But you know what? Don't do that. You know what? Now, Kevin, 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 Ryan, Kevin, Kevin. You know what? Why is it? Can I ask you a question? Why is it when someone me? Is telling the truth, then I am trying it. It is the truth. But look, when Future came here to Philly a few months ago, Future sold out not one but two shows. Mm -hmm. Okay? He sold out his first show so fast that they had to add a deck a second date. Future is big. I don't pay attention to him. I don't, I don't. But Future, I cannot deny the fact that Future is very big. Is Sierra big? Yes, she is. But Future is on a whole You know why he's on all that? Because people aren't buying her music. But, but they're buying the, People are not buying Sierra's music. But you know what? They definitely have an opinion about how she's raising her baby. Everybody mm -hmm. got a future mm -hmm. about Russell Wilson being uh -huh. there. But opinions don't and, um, pay bills. Opinions don't pay bills. However, she's still pretty popular. Yes, she is. Everybody is talking about it. You mean, you go on talk shows. Mm -hmm. They're talking about it. If Sierra not at the talk show, they're still talking about it. You're right. You know, so she is big. They're just not buying her music. She's if she's not if she's modeling something, everybody goes crazy mm -hmm. because she a beautiful you know, woman. If she get a, a modeling deal, they're gonna talk about it. If Future talks negative about Sierra, his future half mm -hmm. is gonna go over mm -hmm. to her page mm -hmm. and talk shit. Mm -hmm. So when she says that he's damaging her reputation, it's very true because that social media platform shit is is. is it's serious. And Sierra, when, when we found out about all of this stuff, she was trending for hours. Girls that don't buy Sierra music had an opinion. <laughs> Everybody had an opinion. But why? But listen, listen. But this is what I don't understand. Because somebody like Future that you upgraded, Mm -hmm. have, you have now allowed him to damage or tarnish your career to the fact that every time he mentions you, people don't buy your stuff. They just talk bad about you. Mm -hmm. Whereas though, that's the total opposite for a lot of artists. Some artists, when you got people talking bad about them, people go to buy their stuff. And you be trying to figure out why isn't this artist responding back. And they're not responding back because the checks and coins mm -hmm. are still coming in. But I'm not understanding mm -hmm. because I, this is how I feel. While Sierra is very popular, she's a beautiful woman, this, that, and third, you can't take that away from her. But, like Wendy Williams said, and I agree with Wendy Williams, and you know I rarely agree with her. <laughs> <laughs> I rarely agree with her. But I agreed with her when she said this. Is it 
was is is future really the reason why Sierra isn't selling, or was Sierra not selling before this even happened? I think that Sierra really needs to step it up in her music. But now, the album she did was future. I love that she canceled Jackie. a tour to start recording hey, an album. If she's gonna make a new album, Sierra needs to be very personal, and Sierra <laughs> needs to fucking bring it. And this is the thing, Sierra, you used to be played on pop and R&B. Now you're only relying on the R&B says you need to do something that's going to get your ass back on those pop channels. I don't know who you got to talk to, who your label, who your label got to have to, what they have to do. But you, they need to step it up for you because you came, when you came out, every song you came out with was a hit. Mm -hmm. After you fuck with 50 Cent, I don't know what happened. Mm. I can tell you what happened. He, it just, she got that Vivica A. Fox mm -hmm. syndrome. Like, it just went mm -hmm. down. Oh, it just went damn fucking good. I mean, damn good. Too. <laughs> but Sierra, you know, y y good luck with you. I'm just glad that I just something. And some people are also saying that Sierra can't say his name, future name, because of legal stuff. I don't think it would hurt her if, for her to say future's name at the nomination thing last week. That was all shade to me. Yeah, I don't yeah, think that, I, I, that was very shade. Before. And I didn't get that when people were leaving that all in my comments. I was reading them when people were leaving that in my comments on Instagram. I was reading it like this. Yeah, Sierra knew what job she was accepting for the Billboard okay. Awards. She okay, knew that. and she, she knew that her baby father would be nominated. <laughs> I mean, how could he not be nominated? You upgraded him to be nominated. Ooh. I mean, what's the last time you been nominated? Mm. For best artists of anything. Don't do that. But Sierra, we will we do want you to step that's it true. up. If you want if, if she gotta get some new work with some new people that's gonna make her fired, like do that because only person we got right now is Beyonce. And when Beyonce takes break, nobody is taking her spot. And I don't understand how to except for Rihanna. I mean right. Rihanna ain't really She's not really, Rihanna did something all the way together different. So nobody is like really taking over the club. We still got old Beyonce songs playing when I go. And I'm over that. So y'all need to step your fucking music in. And Kelly Rowling, you too. You out here trying to find a group. We need to find you. Come on, get your fucking music out too. All of all y'all need to get it the fuck together. Fuck is y'all doing? So now you don't want to find a group. Who? I want you. No, I like the show. It's cute. Boy. It's cute, but Kelly <laughs> needs to get her career together too. You know what? I feel like I've been hearing you say this for the past oh, yes. eight years now. But this group, this group thing might be a cute thing for her. You know, for her or for the group, for both. <laughs> she's gonna be the coins in pocket. Well, yeah, she'll be the new Matthew with the heart. <laughs> So, so speaking of people throwing people under the buses again, so y'all know we talked about Brandy's legal, Brandy's legal situation two weeks ago. So, Breon Prescott, I really hope I'm saying his name right, he responded and basically, I guess he got a little inspiration from Future because he went in on Brandy. Now, let me just, well, I was looking at some stuff on his phone. I'm sure, what? I can't even get the phone. I didn't even know you were into animals. Hey, you tried it. So, <laughs> let's go. He said, "Bears." This in the in the spokesperson statement, Brianna is deeply disappointed that rather than discussing her concerns with her present contracting status in a productive way, Brandy has taken an unwarranted, desperate measures to stay relevant by falling false outrageous claims and speaking on social media. His recent work with her was the product of his strong belief that her career deserves and can be revitalized. He tried to create a conduit for her to find an an effective outlet for her music by presenting a new deal to secure distribution. At no point has this process generated meaningful revenue for Mr. Prescott. As one of Brandy's most consistent supporters, his professional connection to her precedes her recent negotiations with Sony. Rihanna wishes nothing but the best for Brandy and believes she's a she deserves a prosperous career. It says Brian has not served, has not been served. This is a slot to drum up publicity for her single release. Brandy released a video for Begging and Pleading today. If Prescott wanted to, he could have pulled the song from iTunes. At no point was Brandy blocked or controlled from recording or releasing new music. And also, Brandy is not signed to Epic Records. Brandy uses her music as a tool to promote her acting career. I don't understand that part. Brian and Brandy haven't spoken more than three words in three years. Brandy had huge multi-selling hits on Atlantic Records from 1994 to 2002, but her sales began to decline as tastes changed. No, I'll tell you why. It, downloading cut into sales and her audience moved on. Oh, you really tried it. She went from selling over 1 million copies in 2002 to just 400,000 copies in 2004. 
Her 2008 album is not called Knockout, but that bombed with 214,000 copies. And her most recent album, 211, only sold 180,000 copies. Brandy was more interested in doing TV movies and Broadway than in touring for the album, which resulted in low sales. RCA cut their losses and dropped her. So that's all I'm going to read from this. Now, I don't know what Brandy and this guy got going on, but they need to fix it. If Brandy's going to be under this chameleon um, record label, she needs to, um, mm -hmm. like, they need to cut their ways and just go. Now, why Brandy wasn't solo anymore? It's because people was not feeling Brandy no more because she was lying about a whole bunch of stuff. Now, let's just keep it real. Brandy was not telling the truth. She was still thinking this is the 90s when people could get on the internet. And, you know, once she had that car accident, it really did her career end. Because Brandy was on that show, America's Got Talent, on NBC. And then once the car accident, you know, her whole career changed. That changed her whole life as well. So Brandy went through a whole lot of stuff. Some fans stayed and some fans moved on. But, you know, Brandy still means a lot to music. And if you're going to take the helms of her career, then you need to make sure that Brandy is everywhere and doing what she has to do. Like, it's nothing wrong with Brandy doing the game, because that was one of the TV shows she was on. She did Broadway. That was like three years after that two, two, um, 211 album came out. And Brandy did go on a tour. It wasn't like a real big tour, but she toured. But if you felt that Brandy could do more, then you should have had her doing more things. Like, I would love for Brandy to do movies. Like, I don't, I don't understand why Brandy isn't in the movie because she's a great actress. Now, this new TV show, it was cute, but it wasn't what I, I, I want for Brandy. Mm -hmm. I would like to see her in more serious roles than trying to be a, a comedic you actress. You said it was cute. Did they cancel it? Or no? I don't think it was canceled, okay. but, you know, it wasn't it wasn't what I... It was cute, yeah, but, but I know she's better not, than that. There you go. She's better than that. And, 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 and that's just... She's it's way better than that. Yeah, and... You know, Brandy, I I just can't, we can't force people to buy music. If I can have everybody album go platinum, I would love for it to go platinum. But these stars have to figure out new ways to do things. Like, reality TV is the thing now. Like, a lot of these reality stars or, or, or singers now, like, they'll have, like, a, a documentary or something. Like, Keisha Cole, before every album, you know she got a fucking show out. Because that way, you're on TV, more exposure, more people want to buy your album. K. Michelle is not leaving reality TV. Tamar is not leaving TV, period. Every time you turn around, she's on somebody's show. Like, this this is the new way to be relevant and current. Like, so Brandy's going to have to get it together. She's going to have to get it together, get the fuck out this deal. Find a record label that values you, and you have to know how much you're valued in yourself as well, too. So, you know, I just wish her the best. I wish her the whole best with this whole crazy ass situation going on. Um, Trina joined in Love Hip Hop Miami. Now see, she's somebody else that needs a television. Us seeing her on TV, on a show like Love Hip Hop Miami. Love Hip Hop Miami, is this a new show? It's going to be coming out, yes. I'm excited for this. Her, Trick Daddy, and Trick Daddy, like I only want people from Miami on this show. Like, he's... You know, he's trying to make it a real show and not just... I just hope Trina don't get into that. I don't want her to be fighting, yeah. but I want to see her fighting for her career. Because, and I want, and something I really want, I want Beyonce to do a song with Trina. I really want this to happen. That I would love that too because of the fact, well for me, I know how much of a stand Trina is for Beyonce. Yes. She is, I think Trina is like a VIP Beehive member. <laughs> <laughs> she loves her some Beyonce. Mm -hmm. Have they ever met? I'm sure they have. Know. I'm sure they have. But they need to do a song. That would be cool. Like, Especially now that Beyonce is more provocative and stuff. With Nicki Minaj. Yes. With whom I thought would never happen. <laughs> but, oh, <laughs> fool me once, shame on me. And this show, two, 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 two or three times. <laughs> Twice, shameful. You know, I, I, I'm excited to see <laughs> Trina doing something besides getting dumped by these basketball players. Oh, Trina. Don't say that. No, but it's the truth. Well, Trina, she got some good dick out of it. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Trina, we love you. Now, everybody's been saying, well, talk about Odell Beckham living with Drake. I'm like, what are they talking about? Like, what the hell? So apparently they have a budding bromance. 
And during this NFL offseason, if y'all don't know who Odell Beckham is, he is a football player for the New York um, Giants. And I guess him and Drake met this past February. They've been cool and they've been hanging out at his house. He be, they be having all kinds of parties and everything. And he said, well, he's been living with Drake and some other people while this new album is, you know, getting done. Views from the Six by Drake. So I guess I, I guess people want us to speculate if Odell Beckham is gay, and this is my thing: if Odell Beckham Jr. is gay, that is his business. It's not nobody else's business whether you think he has suspect ways or not. My jaw, motherfucking business. You make sure that your man is not in another man's bed and fucking you at the same time. You worry about that. I'm not worried about his butt and romance with you. romance with you. Listen, there's a mm, there's a <laughs> there are a lot of artists. When they are recording albums, they gather up a group of their friends and they go somewhere, they rent a house, and they, okay? Mm -hmm. There was an album that I remember when Beyonce did, um, what was the album that she did right after she, I think it was, um, Drive a Roll at the Partition, please. And that album, yeah. Beyonce. Beyonce. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't think of the name of it. And it's Beyonce. Um, I remember she had like some movie clips and this, that, and the third, personal home movie documentary clips. And one of the clips were, she talked about how she had, they went up to the Hamptons, I think it was, and they had a group of their friends come up while they were doing this album. This is nothing new. People, artists do it all the time. The only reason why people want us to talk about Odell Beckham and Drake doing it, because people think that Odell Beckham is gay, because Odell Beckham knows how to have fun. And any straight man that has fun, they assume he's gay. And it's so sad, and it's that's the world we live in. It's so unfortunate. And I wish you would have told me this ahead of time because I would have told you, no, let's not talk about this. Because I feel stupid even talking about it now. But that's the only reason why people think that he's gay. I don't think Odell Beckham is gay. I love the fact that he has fun and he likes to dance and he likes to dance with his friends and have a good time. Did y'all ever stop to think about maybe Odell Beckham is actually turning the tables and making fun of y'all for thinking that he's gay? Mm. Leave it just like that. That was cute. I like that. So, um, Chris Brown is making a documentary. I mean, after six years, I guess, after the whole thing that happened with him and Rihanna. What well, is that? Seven? Oh, my God. 2009. Uh, right. Seven years. He's doing this documentary, and they got all of these celebrities talking about Chris Brown. But these clips look like it was older. And he's, he'd say that once, you know, the whole thing happened with him and Rihanna, he considered doing committing suicide, which is funny because now you coming at somebody who tried to commit suicide. Mm. Like, it's just... And you were walking down that path. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But he, he has a documentary coming out. Y'all can check for it. I'll be watching it probably. Um, and I seen the trailer for... How do you say it? The Birth of a Nation, which is, the, which is a Nat Turner film made by Nate Parker, who produces money, movie with his money and some other movies. Funds, but he was when he was at the YouTube Black thing, he said that after that Beyond the Lights movie came out, he said he's not taking no more roles until he get this Nat Turner film done. Mm -hmm. And come and find out, like a couple months ago, he won seven. He sold the rights for the film for seventeen million dollars to Fox Searchlight, and he didn't want the movie on Netflix. He's he wanted in theaters, right? So it's going to be distributed by Fox, and you know this is. You know, he's How does the trailer look? It's it? great. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be Oscars, Oscars, Oscars. That's all I can say. Y'all heard it first here. Oscars, Oscars, Oscars. And this is not going to be like, oh, well, they only nominating this black film because they wasn't nominating movies. No. This is just by the, the way the way it's all set up. This is a fucking film. This mm -hmm. is a movie. And I know some people tired of the slavery shit. But Nat Turner's story needs to be told because it's not, he's not someone that's often talked about. You hear about Harriet Tubman and stuff, but go ahead. I just want to say this, and I'm sorry, I really am, I apologize for cutting that's you fine. off. But I really want people to get out of this, I'm tired of the slavery type movies, or I'm tired of slavery type TV shows. And the reason why is because that is a part of our history. 
And when I hear particularly black people say that, it reminds me of those white folks that are tired of us talking about stuff like that. The white folks that are tired of us talking about civil rights, the civil rights movement, the white folks that are tired of us talking about slavery because they feel as though it happened, get over it, let it go. This is how I feel when I hear black people say that. And why on earth would we want to stop seeing films like this when every damn year they're making a World War II movie? I, I don't understand it. Like, it happened... I, I don't care if they made slavery movies every damn year until there was no more years left on this earth, okay? It is a part of our history. And the minute you stop making stuff like that, or you stop talking about um, stuff like historical events like that, whether it be slavery or the Civil War or the Civil Rights Movement, the minute you stop talking about stuff like that, our children suffer. Why? Because the children then begin not to know what happened. And then we wonder why we got so many stupid, illiterate kids walking around. Why? Because you got schools and teachers that refuse to teach certain subjects. So us black folks, please let's stop saying, oh, I'm tired of the slavery movies. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. No, you shouldn't be tired of it. Because if I was those ancestors, those people in the graves, I would be flipping in my grave if I heard somebody saying, I'm tired of it. It is a part of our history. We should embrace it. So that we don't walk down that slippery slope again. Because we, come to think of it, in 2016 with this president election, presidential election, we could be walking down that slippery slope again. If we elect somebody like Donald Trump into office. Okay? I, I don't know about y'all, but it's very true when they say history has a way of repeating itself. It may not repeat itself the way it happened in 1865, but God damn it, it will repeat itself. So please, let's get off this. I'm tired of hearing about movies like this. You shouldn't be tired of it. And then, you know, also, too, if black people have that attitude, if I'm tired of hearing about movies like this, then you know what happened to that movie? It won't do well, and it will fail, and it will bomb. And then we will wonder why it bombed, because black folks decided they didn't want to go see stuff like that. Why? Because they're tired of hearing about stuff like that. And that's all I got to say, because it's making me the fuck Man. Well, I know it might make me now. I know I said I was tired of because after I seen Twelve Years a Slave, I was done. But like I said, I gave that show Underground a chance, and just from me watching, you get to see every you see everybody's story from the slave masters through the slave catchers through the ones running trying to get away to the people that decided to stay. You see so much going on, and each week is intriguing. Then you see the Uncle Tom be betray mm -hmm. one of the people that's running with him. He shot him like, bitch, what is wrong with you? Like, you really tried it. Like, it really fucks with my emotions when I watch this show. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. And I get so excited every time I talk about it. I love Underground. And y'all need to catch up on it. Because it's like one of the best shows on television. It really is. And Empire... I, I want to give a uh, congratulations to Lee Daniels because you're stepping it the fuck up. You got rid of all the celebrities. They're dead now. They're mm -hmm. dead and gone. And you're back to the original story of the Empire and how we're going to be the, a number one company. And then you got all of this family drama going around. I am enjoying Empire this time around this season. So shout out to Lee Daniels for that. I tried to watch this new show, Game of Silence. I'm going to have to rewatch it because I'm trying to... I don't really like shows where they keep going into flashbacks like that. I, I hate shows like that. Just show me what happens so I can get a oh sense, but don't keep going back into There the was a movie, and some of y'all probably knew what I'm talking about. There was this movie that came out a few years ago with Tom Cruise, and I think, um, I forget what her name was. And every time the movie, I, I can't think of the name of it, but every time it got to a certain point in the movie, it rewinded all over again. Mm -hmm. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> I... Hate that. When I tell you, I said I'm gonna watch this because I watched it on HBO. I'm gonna watch it. I said, baby, <laughs> within like the first half an hour, I said, oh, I'm turning this the fuck off. Cause didn't I just see this? It's like it would get to ten minutes into the movie and then it reminded back to show you how if things would have happened a certain way, and then the next twenty minutes it reminded back to you. Like, whoa, wait a minute, what the fuck is going on? I don't like this kind of movie. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to keep talking because I'm going to find yeah. the name. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm going to try to give Game of Silence one more thing. My show, um, also TV show coming back, Wayward Pines is returning May 25th. And I cannot wait. Um, there's going to be some new people on there. But, you know, the story, it was just, oh, I'm so excited. 
because y'all know I'm not really like TV show, TV show out. But Where Were Pines was a summer drama theory, 10 episodes. And it came back. It's coming back. I, I thought it was going to be canceled. I have to but you have, yeah, yeah, to, I have finish. to finish it. Because yeah. David Pilcher's legacy is still living on. You know, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. But it's coming back. And then Oprah is going to be returning to TV with this show called Green. It's called Greenleaf. Oprah on own own TV. I, I love the fact that Oprah thought in 2011 that she should leave on a <laughs> high note because she was the number one show for the past 25 years. But I still to this day feel like Oprah should have never left TV. Mm -hmm. I do because when Oprah left, we were left with. Just the news to fill the site and Wendy Williams. And Wendy Williams. And then the real. And then, and the, then real. the talk. But you didn't have <laughs> but you didn't have a powerful one man figure on television like Oprah. And on daytime. Oprah was that one man figure where she dominated and everybody else came under her. You still have a show like that. Like ever since she left. Like one person that was willing to talk about oh, I gotta hurry up. All kinds of views. World views, regular news, current events, music stars. You don't have that on one show. And we're like, when growing up, you had Oprah for the mm -hmm. real serious, serious people. You had Maury besides before the baby father stuff. Yeah. He had interesting topics. But I really miss a show like Ricky Lake. Now, Wendy Williams got that young vibe going, but, but it's just, it's yeah. not, it's, it's not it's gossip yeah. And, yeah. and questions. But <laughs> Topic gossip and questions. Yes, I want topics like right. <laughs> the shit that's really going on, like the shit that you see in the shade room. This is some of the stuff I want to see. I want the shade rooms Instagram page now private. <laughs> really? Yes, I went on there and it was private. So and you wasn't following them? I, well, no, I was never following the shade room, <laughs> and that's no shade. But I just, you know. Um, oh, but I found the movie that I was talking about with Tom Cruise. It's called Edge of Tomorrow with him and Emily Blunt. And I'm just going to read this. Um, it says, when Earth falls under attack from invincible aliens, no military unit in the world is able to beat them. Major Cage, um, Tom Cruise, an officer who has never seen combat, is assigned to a suicide mission. Killed within moments, Cage finds himself thrown into the time loop in which he relives the same brutal fight and his death over and <laughs> Fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> Kevin, I was watching this movie and I thought it was something wrong with my TV. That's <laughs> why this movie keeps starting over. Ain't nobody why does it keep starting over? I really was laying them across my bed, confused. I can't look at the remote. This movie keeps starting over. But that was supposed to start over. So don't ask me how you get to the end of the movie because I don't you know. Stop, I'm not going to stop watching this. Stop watching it. But thank y'all for watching our new video. We will be back on Thursday and Friday with some new videos. Um, thank y'all for your prayers. Please keep my mom in your prayers. Mm -hmm. And um, we will see y'all later this week. Peace. Yeah, you don't want to watch that movie. The Edge of Tomorrow.